Banshee, a lifeless alien world. Deep below the surface, millions of highly aggressive armored arthropods await to do battle with the humans who are invading their home. Why are the humans there? We don't know. But that's not really the story that we're here to tell. We're here to tell the story of a single soldier on this world named Felix. But this isn't Banshee. This is Brad at 100 Servings, and today we're going to talk about John Steakley's 1984 science fiction novel, Armor. Good morning, it's Brad here at 100 Servings, and today we are in the beautiful, picturesque town of Cleburne, Texas. It's springtime, it's actually kind of pretty out here today. Everyone has puffy eyes and dripping noses, everyone is miserable with allergies, so why on earth are we here? Well, we're here today to talk about the book Armor by John Steakley. John William Steakley was born here in Cleburne, Texas in 1951. He only published two novels in his lifetime. Why is this book so well-renowned compared to so many other novels out there? Why is this so loved? Why is it so respected? It really is split in two separate parts. When you're writing, you generally have to consider the perspective that you want to write under. For sections of the book, it's written in third person, where we're experiencing and seeing what's occurring to a character by the name of Felix. In other sections of the book, it's split to first-person perspective, where we hear Jack Crow talking about what's occurring to him and what his experiences are. The first time I read this book, this was really off-putting to me. I didn't understand why they would do this. I didn't understand what the purpose behind it was. And it wasn't until I actually opened a Wikipedia article and read what was going on as to how I could actually appreciate the book. So I will say, this was a little bit difficult to get into to start with. What is apparent very early on is that Felix is fitted with a unique suit of armor known as scout armor. Unlike typical soldier armor in the book and that the other soldiers are using, his armor doesn't have integrated weapons. He's reliant on a rifle. The armor suits are nuclear powered, they use a laser-stimulated plant to recycle their oxygen. They're really pretty complex and they're very well described in the book. What makes Felix unique compared to the other soldiers around him is his mind. Felix has the ultimate warrior's mentality. His brain functions in two ways. One is fear. Whenever Felix isn't on the battlefield, Felix is afraid. Felix doesn't want to go into battle. Felix doesn't want to get killed. Felix doesn't want to face the enemy that they're up against. The other side of it is hatred. When Felix comes toe to toe with his enemy, that switch goes off in his head and he shifts from a person who's afraid of the enemy to then hating the enemy and hating the way that they make him feel. He refers to it as the engine. The engine is what keeps him alive time after time after time, battle after battle. And Felix doesn't want to be out there. Felix hates it. He's not one of these soldiers that revels in battle. And when he's alone, when he's not facing the enemy, he shakes. He's in fear. He's not this invincible warrior. Several times in the book, you would imagine that a guy like him would always win these fights, and he doesn't. Felix is hurt. He's injured numerous times. At several points in the book, they've actually been out searching for survivors and given up, and on their way back in, have stumbled across his body and brought him back, repaired him, and put him right back into the fight. During the assault on Banshee, Felix also meets up with a group of veteran soldiers. When he starts talking to them, they explain that there's a percentage survival chance for everyone on the battlefield. It's rated by how many drops they've made, how many times they've come back, what kind of equipment they have. Usually soldiers that go into combat with scout armor survive a lot shorter periods of time than the others do. 
soldiers in their first encounter with the enemy tend not to survive as long as others do. Felix is wearing scout armor and it's his first encounter with the enemy. His chances of survival are less than 10%. This does concern him, but again, the, the mindset of fear is what prevents him from making stupid decisions. It's what prevents him from being reckless. It's what prevents him from doing things that aren't going to be safe for him to do. Once we've gotten through some of the initial assaults that Felix has gone through on Banshee, we switch over to a character named Jack Crow. Jack Crow's sections are written in first person perspective. Jack Crow is in prison at the time and ends up having to fight his way out and is picked up and rescued by a pirate. The pirate transports Jack Crow to another planet with the plan that Jack is going to get in, disarm the defenses, and allow for the pirates to come down to the world so that they can fuel up their ship and be on their way. What Jack doesn't realize is the pirates have an altogether more vicious plan. So when you're talking John Steakley, since he only wrote two novels, you really can't talk about one without talking about the other. The funny part is that the characters are in both books. Felix and Jack Crow are in his other book called Vampires, which was made into a movie by John Carpenter. Unfortunately, they kept the title, they kept the concept of the book, they kept some of the dialogue, but they made drastic departures when it came to the content. Armor is worth a read. It's an excellent book. It is deep science fiction. Is there, do they really illustrate the enemy? Do they really explain who the bad guys are? Not really. That's not what the book is about. The book is about the mindset of a warrior. It's about a man pushed to the limit and beyond. It's about a person that we know very little about and why they do what they do, how they do what they do. It's never been made into a film and unfortunately John Steakley died in 2010. One of my whole points of doing this is the fact that anyone with the will to do so can be a writer, can be a good writer. It doesn't matter where you come from. It could be a small town in Texas, it could be Los Angeles, it could be New York. But it's that idea, it's that person with a concept, somebody that wants to write something, somebody that has a story they want to tell. Not necessarily about themselves, but about a place, about a thing, about an event, about a way of life that they don't understand. That's really the heart and soul of what it is to be a writer. And I encourage anyone with any interest to put something to paper one of these days.